bored, and I know everyone gets bored when it does monologue. So probably I will sum up whatever I have to say in 15, 20 minutes, and then it would be a good thing to have a free discussion. You can ask any question, and that would be the better way to interact. That's the modus operandi. Um, I want to say the whys of what I did, what I did in all my previous work, than the what's. The what's are just incidental. The why always remains true. And when I was younger than you guys, right from my startup college days to today, the why probably has not changed. And that's the part. Just to set up context, the day we passed out or finished our last exam for our higher secondary, just I think seven, eight days after that was the momentous moment for India where Manmohan Singh uh, started the liberalization process for Indian economy both. And that's the part time when we decided. Like many of you, I sat for all the competitive exams, like uh, we were forced to by our parents, and I did get many international colleges and stuff. But during the interview at RSI, I just felt this was my place to be, and finding my passion and getting on to mathematics, which I love, was the right part. Again, passion was the key. I chose what I thought I would love doing. While studying, the realization started seeping in that the theoretical field is probably 50, 60 years ahead of that life field. We are studying ANOVA and this and that and getting into intellectual sort of qualification, whereas the real world is not even able to use mean, median, mode properly. So how to get these things into mass market impact and talk. And you know, during college time, you get exposed to a lot of ideologies, politics, uh, impact. So those started influencing. And kind of, given that I'm from Bengal, in the heartland, there was a huge communist movement then. You do start getting the fringe parts of those ideologies and you start looking for impact. That is my life more important for myself as to my bank balance, or is it going to be counted by the impact that we are creating in people? So, to hone those things, to understand what is a business, what and all, I thought it would be good to go to that. So again, it was purpose driven, not just a career path, and it was a choice that I made. But that was a mistake. I was not cut out for management. I just didn't like it. And after ISI, the academic uh, depth that a management institute does, which is more of a general education, was not at the same level of uh, depth, I would say. It was very broad based, it was very good exposure, but it didn't give me the intellectual satisfaction that my ISI days had prepared for. So I decided not to pursue management, and I also didn't take a campus job. I went and joined the government of West Bengal. Uh, there was an organization called Rebel, which was getting computers and electronics. This is 96 we are talking, so just the start of the software era, just <coughs> it's a three, four years after the advent of Infosys and Wipro, just getting into, they're not yet public, um, but just getting there. And from that perspective, started the journey. But once there, I realized that in this bureaucracy and all, I can't function. So I ran away to Bombay. I started working for a company called Data Interactive. This is where I started looking at mass market products. So one of the first things I built was a solution for Unilever called Mass Markets. And that made me understand that all these things that we discuss in AC classrooms and privileged institutions and all, when you go down to the field, it actually means someone's life and death. The margins you decide, the marketing that you do, the Excel sheets you do, they're mostly numbers to you. But that 20% and 18%, the 2% gap, can actually mean the difference between uh, a profitable life or a sustainable life versus a life of death. That realization started seeping in. And with that, in about 97 and 98, we started money control. A few of us, ideological idiots, we went, got together and started. The reason for starting money control was very simple. Our hypothesis was that if the Indian middle class, the intellectual class does not understand the impact of equity, does not understand the value of an enterprise, you will always get the trading entrepreneurs, 
the industrialist entrepreneurs who come from privileged lands. We will never get the intellectual entrepreneurs who are producing products and services. They will always go out to US or Europe, outshine everyone else there, but they will not be able to actually build something in India. And with that, we started Money Control. Our simple premise was finance in rhymes and prose. How do you dumb it down to the level so that everyone can understand the impact of finance and get interested, get that entrepreneurial greed, not just for money, but for creating an enterprise which will outlast them, hopefully, and go on as a heritage and as an endowment to the future generations. So that took about seven years by the time it settled. Nothing happens overnight. It takes a long time to become an overnight success. But money control really, really went. In those days when the internet subscription was, I think, 30,000 people, uh, our user base was close to 8,000 people. And in an area which no one did. But then the other sensitivities came. The second day of the launch of the site, we realized that unless we have a Gujarati and a Marwadi workshop, there is no way the site has any value. Because the main user class is that. Now in 98, there were no Indian fonts. There was nothing. And anything that you had to tell the user, download this font, download that font, how do you do it? It just doesn't work. So we started using images. And we started replacing through a technology which later on became something like an associated arrays, which is now standard in most languages. And remember, we are talking of 0.6 version of the release, 0.92 of MySQL pre-release. And Red Hat was not there, Linux was just there, and we started off those because we wanted to, we built our own machines, we built the OS, stripped it down to what we needed, really went deep because we didn't have money. Progressivity was very important for us. We didn't do it to become uh, intellectuals as well. See, I'm, I'm not biased towards technology. Technology was a tool to me. I'm basically a mathematician. So I just understand the impact and the cost benefit and techno commercial part of it. I know that doesn't matter what it is to serve a request. If I can minimize my total cost, that is great technology. Not what I can put on the CD. Because I was not looking at making a CD. I was looking at making a solution which can be used by people. That mindset remained. Over time, we started realizing that one of the biggest difference between other successful communities, they have their own legacies, they have their own problems, but no matter, they have a higher GDP per person, they have better standard of living, they are self-helpful. They go and fix their own problems. In India, Masi ko bol do, daddy ko push do, paros ko push it was all that. And that was the reason I started getting interested in this call center like things like just that. Just that precedes me. It started from 96, but I went to money and said, if we don't fight the battles, in that time, you know, I don't know how many of you have heard about it. I hope you heard because it's a history lesson. There was a big company called Yahoo. And Google was just coming up. This is 2004, 2005. And our hypothesis again was that if we don't preserve the local commerce information of our country, our commerce will be determined by Cupertino, or Redmond, or any of these places. We will lose control over the information symmetry and information security of our country. And we started transforming. And it was a nice intellectual war. Um, you would not believe it, but website on a mobile was not something we could think of. It was a different protocol called WAP, Web Access Protocol, which was different. The WAP was a mobile-friendly website. And we started building something, because Google came with a product which was SMS-based. We actually didn't go the SMS route because it was easier, for a reason I'll explain that. And we built the first WAP site in India, mobile website. Now our brief was, that on a Dharavi local, which has very limited bandwidth, it goes off very easily, and we are talking of 2007, the page should download in 3 seconds. So name, no page could be more than 4 k That was the limit we started. Once we did that, our counter campaign was, you iterate to a solution with Google and all, with 5 SMS. Each SMS costs you 60 paisa, so you spend 3 rupees, and 4 KB, 4 pages, 16 KB, 
it costs you 10 paisa, so you are cheaper and better off using us. And that's how we took on the mics of the MNCs and stuff like that. But again, the singular part is techno commercial, mass market. Something which is not cost affordable cannot be used by the masses. Please remember that. Fortunately, unfortunately, we actually are born in two simultaneous countries, India and Bharat. Now that they have been made same, which is good, but at that time when we said India and Bharat, it was a wonderful part of India, vis-a-vis -vis the privileged part of India. And there is a like a level difference between what is affordable or deemed affordable, not just from a earning point of view, from a perspective of simple mindset of how much to invest in what is spent. If you don't think of the cost, your solution will never propagate in the market. And we were not making body shopping things, charging by the hour for overseas and doing cost of which of our skills. We were building products for our own country or things which will make the country forward. So the cost that is affordable for people in the country is a huge consideration for the technology and the simplicity of design that you need to put into the technology for people to use. That was a singular part. Chazal thankfully went on. Actually, money control was very successful. Today, the big thing I take pride in is that I know the end of the day when I'm going to sleep, at least 11 million people have used something I have made. And every day. That is the biggest impact. Now, how you monetize and all is important. Because innovation has a cost. You cannot do things for charity. If you do it, you will fester into nothing. As an enterprise, as a business, there is no choice but to make profit. And not only make profit, maximize profit. Without predatory pricing or opportunistic pricing, Kill your mark. But at the same time, the difference is where are you spending your profit? If you take your profit and put it back into RD, that's development. If you take your profit and buy great cars, that's personal gain. And personal gain is like you know, the equation you study V equal to U plus FT. So your personal gain takes up from the F, and finally you are left with a small V, which is the problem with most Indian organizations. That's a mindset change you have to do. You were born in much better times than us. We have fought so that you have this better country and I take pride as a generation for doing that. Which also means you should have more freedom of mind to not get too money hungry and think for actual impact and value of your life. We were hand to mouth. We had to get a job otherwise our dads and moms would think we are good for nothing. But you don't have that problem. You have a privilege which erstwhile the European or the American countries used to have. And you used to be wondering how can they take a break of two years and go world tour when they have not even finished college. That was the mindset. But today we can think of those things. Now that was a good part which is attractive. But it's also true that many of them left college and started business. Right from then, though they were very educated. That part is now coming in. And there Unfortunately, there are always bad sides and good sides and today I have said that in the earlier days we used to call everyone an entrepreneur. But now in our circles we say that this is a passion printer and that's a passion printer. So passion printers are people who think that it's cool to be the CEO of a startup. So I'll start my own startup. I don't have to report to anyone. Is that the objective of starting a prop or a business? It's not. According to us. There is no right or wrong but it's a matter of opinion. What matters is not who you are reporting to, but how many jobs have you created? How many people's roji roti you are supporting, directly and indirectly. <clears throat> now please understand the difference. So the numbers are great to hear, 4.8 million queries a day. Now let's understand the context of those numbers. So 4.8 million queries a day, and no one goes to judge that just sniff out and browse among companies, right? It's a stupid thing. You'd rather browse some interesting pictures. Uh, you know the types I'm talking about. But you go there with the intent to transact. So that means if there are 4.8 million queries, at least 4 million of them are translating into some business of their Right? Take the average value of that transaction because some value, some 
goods are 500 bucks, some goods are 6,000 bucks, some goods are 12,000 bucks, like um, Chabi wala is 600 bucks, Packer and Mover is 12,000 bucks. So take an average of, just for simplicity's sake, 1,000 rupees per transaction. What's the amount of economy we are supporting? 28 million. 4 billion rupees. So you, just by uh, structure your bill, are affecting a single decimal place percentage of India's GDP. That is what the real value is for what you do. So if you start measuring about the impact you are creating to the economy, and you bet on the economy and say, if it grows, I grow, and you align yourself to that, you have the best of both worlds. You are personally growing, as well as you are making sure that the domicile, the environment, the other parts that you are doing is growing along with you. Through all this, I stuck to my core passion and love, which is maths. Before I code, before I do anything, it's always an Excel sheet for me. Starting from the simplest visibility to the most complicated things, and it's very versatile. I don't need fancy tools, I can take a very simple Excel formula or a VBA programming and get the pseudo code ready see the concept first, I can do simulations, I don't need Python to do that. Just to get the proof of concept. So don't go for tools, go for what you are easy with to make your originality come out. You people are going to get into jobs at a very interesting time. You are all aware of generative AI and all, right? <laughs> Simple thing is, if you are not adding value, you don't have value. Because some generative AI algorithm will do it better than you. So if you are doing anything which is repetitive, process oriented, rigorous, systematic, a machine will do it better. So what is human is originality, is to think out of the box, is to have original thoughts, original design, original business. And if you are not preparing yourself for those skills in the future, I don't think you have one. I know it sounds very somber, I know it sounds very disorienting, but actually it's a celebration of humanity. You should think of it positively that this is actually make, not making me into a machine. My job is not to talk to a stupid customer and placid them over some wrongly issued checks. I am an engineer, I am a doctor, I am a mathematician. My job is to think the limits of what I can use, my specialization for the upliftment. And again, I use this as a tool. So, either you are the tool or you use the tool. And if you are the tool, you don't have economic validity to be a tool. You cannot code an API faster than II programs. I'm sorry, that's the truth. Because the time you take to write code, six hours, the AI program with all these things will try 60,000 variations. And just by sheer brute force, one of those will be more optimal than the one in code. But the AI can't do, sorry, uh, can't do anything about design. Where do I press the button? What flow should I take so the user understands it? What are human elements? That's where the focus falls. And once you get the structure, the algorithm, the, algor the architecture, the flow of data, then you are adding value. That is more or less it. In fact, that's the monologue I'll have. I think I've covered everything. I'll open it up for questions and I'll be happy to answer those. I'll be happier to answer those. This was very boring. Can I sit down? You can ask questions? All right.